In the realm of horror games, camera perspective can make a world of difference. From how the game controls to how the game builds tension and evokes fear in the player. A change in perspective can change the game, both from a literal and figurative sense. And there's no better proof of this than mods that allow you to change a game's camera perspective. From changing an over-shoulder experience to a fixed camera, over the shoulder to first person, or even a fixed camera to first person or over the shoulder. This video will have two purposes. One is bringing a spotlight to mods in the Resident Evil, Dead Space, and Silent Hill series that change the game's camera perspectives. The second is discussing the merits and drawbacks of three types of camera perspectives, that being fixed camera, first person, and over the shoulder. Yes, there are other camera perspectives horror games use. Top Down is one of them. Games like Signalis, Conscript, and Darkwood use them to great effect. But for this video, I'll be focusing on the big three. Spoiler alert, I'll be gushing about fixed cameras while dunking on the overuse of over the shoulder for modern, large-budget horror games. This video will also serve as a plea for larger studios to take another chance on fixed cameras. Indie titles do a great job of keeping fixed cameras alive, and I would love to see larger studios take another crack at them. If you're interested in trying out these mods, I'll have links in the description and pinned comment. Special shout out to my fellow boulder punchers who further support the channel through Patreon or YouTube memberships. If you'd like to receive early access to videos, be featured in the credits, receive periodic updates, and my undying gratitude, consider joining the club. With that, let's begin. Starting with changing the perspective from over the shoulder to fixed camera. March of 2024 saw the release of RE2R Classic Fixed Camera Mod from modder Alphas Omega, a mod that allows you to play the Resident Evil 2 remake from a fixed camera perspective, one with over 17 shots throughout the campaigns. The mod allows for great levels of customization, from the controls, auto-aim, to the camera settings. Have a fixed camera that follows you, have a static fixed camera, or somewhere in the middle with semi-fixed. I found the best experience to be with semi-fixed, the choice is yours with how much the mod offers. You can enable the option to have items flash in the environment to help stand out. Another feature allows you to switch to over the shoulder while aiming down your gun, before switching back to fixed camera, an approach one of the earlier versions of Resident Evil 4 used. End result is a fantastic experience that gets you about 90-95% to of the way there of the old school survival horror experience. Considering Capcom designed the game around the over the shoulder perspective, it's a strong testament to the game's design. How it approaches its combat, exploration, and resource management, very old school in this design, with modern touches sprinkled on top. During the game's development, there were plans for a fixed camera mode as a selling point, something they ended up dropping. So while the mod gets you most of the way there, there's still notable roadblocks in its way. Roadblocks that demonstrate the shortcomings of the older the shoulder perspective. The survival horror thrives on limiting or taking control away from the player to drive fear. Fixed camera is a means of doing so. The game dictates the camera, not the player. You could use these shots to build tension and fear in the player, where they feel like someone or something is watching them, where the player isn't sure what's around the next corner. But when you give the player control of the camera, like using an over the shoulder perspective, you lose this way of evoking fear in the player. So what's another way to evoke fear? Make everything dark. Have the player unsure what's going to pop out of the darkness. And this is a valid approach, but it's one that can become predictable and wear out its welcome, whereas a fixed camera can give you so many more options of evoking fear. The 1998 Resident Evil 2 relied little on darkness, instead using fixed cameras to build tension. The 2019 remake shrouds the police station in darkness, with heavy reliance on the flashlight. This darkness is where the fixed camera mod clashes with the foundational design of the remake. Sure, you could turn up the brightness, but that's more of a band-aid solution. Thank God for the mod having the ability to turn on flashing items to help them stand out from the environment. There are some quirks to the mod itself that take some time to adjust to. Auto-aim snapping can be iffy at points, especially when dealing with groups. The running quick turn can take a bit to get used to. There is a brief moment where the game will reorient the controls. Hit the run button too soon and it'll be heading the opposite direction of what you want. I had a few moments of these that resulted in damage I shouldn't have ended up taking. I could get some odd controller issues if I enabled over the shoulder mode while aiming before the game would return to fixed camera. 
but you'll get used to these quirks in short order, and the mod allows for high levels of customization to suit your needs. I'm a fan of the 2019 Resident Evil remake. I think it's the best title of the RE engine era of Resident Evil. Yes, it did have its issues and disappointments with cut content, but it was a great reimagining of the 1998 title and made it a new experience. And now with this fixed camera mod, you could have a more classic experience akin to the Resident Evil titles of old. Despite some of the quirks due to the clashing design, I found the fixed camera mod to be the superior way of playing. Switching back to over the shoulder had the game feeling generic and by the book. It's an absolute must play mod, and I'd love to see Resident Evil 7 be given this kind of treatment. It's more deliberate pacing, it's strong focus on resource management, with locales more in line with the first game in the series, it'd be a great fit. You can stitch together what it would look like using FreeCam with RE Framework, a tool developed by PreyDog you can use with the RE Engine titles. The footage you see here comes from the channel enveloping sounds, stitching together camera cuts, a showing of the possibilities. There is no full-fledged fixed camera mod for it, but I sure would love to see one. Of course, you could say the same for the other RE Engine titles. Enveloping sounds to a few concept videos covering the other RE Engine titles in the series. Although the greater focus on action would be a bit trickier to pull off. Getting the fixed camera to work with the dodging capabilities of the Resident Evil 3 remake would be a bit more tricky. And plus, it's Resident Evil 3 remake. Time's better spent elsewhere. Village could work in some areas, but again, enemy speed and numbers could make it tricky. Switching between fixed to over the shoulder framing could work, but that's something the player's going to have to do a lot of. Same case goes for the Resident Evil 4 remake. No doubt would they be interesting to have as mods, but beyond the remake of 2 and Resident Evil 7, would have larger clashes with their perspective shifts. But shifting from third person to first person? That's a far smoother transition. Whether it's more action-oriented like the RE4 remake, or something more deliberate like the RE2 remake. Shifting to the first person offers another means of changing the game up. Something that you could do with the RE framework with RE2 that I brought up earlier from Prey Dog. Of course, there are still some issues with the changes. For the remake of 2, dodging zombie lunges is a bit trickier in first person due to movement. Lunges built around the over-the-shoulder perspective and controls. You have the option of toggling cutscenes in first person. This results in some amusement with odd glitches and camera cuts that weren't built around the first person perspective. Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. But if you'd like to see the Raccoon Police Station from the eyes of Leon and Claire for a more immersive experience, you can do so with this mod. For the Resident Evil 4 remake, you have to go through a few more hurdles with its first person mod. Created by El Superaga, I totally butchered that, the first person perspective mod requires a few additional mods to cut down on some of the clipping, which will still occur depending on your FOV settings. Again, not perfect, but it does work well with a game's action. I found with parries I was more focused on the attacks themselves as opposed to the icon for timing. The melee strikes carried over well. Playing from the first person, you could see how much of RE4's DNA was in Village, and to go along with that, how egregious they were with the yellow paint. Sure, they used yellow paint at points in the Resident Evil 2 remake, they also made use of police tape to guide the player in a much more natural way. That said, if given the choice between the two perspectives, I'd still go with over the shoulder as opposed to first person. Not only because they designed the games around them, but because of our playable characters. One reason the first person perspective worked well for Resident Evil 7 Village was due to Ethan Winters being more of an everyman more of a blank slate compared to other characters in the series. It became comical as time went on with how far Capcom would go to hide his face, something evident when playing the over-shoulder mode Capcom added to Village. Unless you unlock the camera, Ethan's face will keep turning away. On the note of this over-the-shoulder mode, it's nice that Capcom added it in. That said, it's the inferior way of playing Village. You lose a sense of immersion, and once again, the game feels more by the books. It's not playing to the strengths of the first-person perspective. With that, let's leave the world of Resident Evil behind for now and hop aboard the USG Shimura of Dead Space. Of all the games in the wake of the original Resident Evil 4, it's one of the best to take the formula and run with it. Dead Space is one of the best showings of effective usage of the over-the-shoulder perspective and its focus on action. If you've ever been curious to make your way through the USG Shimura through the eyes of Isaac Clarke, you can do so with the first-person mod. Created by Reverse Engineering Gaming for the 2008 Dead Space, this mod allows you to switch between first and third person using Using Cheat Engine. Check the description and pinned comment for the mod itself and a Steam guide for installation. If you ever want to get a more up close and personal look at the staggering details of the USG Ishimura, switch to first person. Or if you want to get a better look at the Necromorphs aboard the ship. 
I was curious to see how the zero-g sections would handle. I'm happy to report the first-person perspective didn't clash with it. There's a level of immersion that you can't reach with over the shoulder that you can with the first-person perspective. If you've run through the game several times and looking for a change-up, consider giving it a play in the first person. Well, at least for various stretches before switching back to the third person. The mod itself isn't perfect due to the game's foundational design of over the shoulder. The game's use of jump scares or monsters popping out events wears you out more in the first person. With over the shoulder, you can get away with it more due to having more distance between us and the monster. But the biggest issue of all is with the UI. Without seeing Isaac's back, you're not sure of your health levels or your stasis energy level. That element of immersion of the UI is lost in first person. You can switch back and forth between perspectives with a key press, but that does take you a bit out of the experience, both from a literal and figurative sense. As well, you'll have to reset your FOV when switching back to first person. The transition from over the shoulder to first person doesn't work as well compared to the Resident Evil titles mentioned earlier, but still gets you about a good 90% of the way there if had they decided to have made Dead Space in the first person. So if you're a veteran of the game, give it a spin for a fresh experience. With that, let's head back to Earth and into the town of Silent Hill. If you're like me, I'm sure you're disappointed, but not surprised that the Silent Hill 2 remake was using an over-the-shoulder camera. The fixed cameras of the classic Silent Hill titles saw some of the best usage in the genre. That said, I'm sure you've also had a morbid curiosity with how the games would look from the first person or over the shoulder. Those first person stretches of Silent Hill 4 may have got you thinking about how the rest of the game would look. And now, thanks to Zealot Tormans, you could do so for the PC versions of Silent Hill 2, 3, and 4. Released in August and September of 2024, Zealot's camera mods allow you to see the world of Silent Hill from the eyes of our protagonist or see the world over their shoulder. Funny enough, I found the camera mod worked best for Silent Hill 3. For whatever reason, I couldn't get it working right with Silent Hill 2. It would run, but I couldn't control the camera. I've seen others get it running fine with no issues, so it must be something on my end. There has already been a couple of updates for the SH2 camera mod. Guess that perspective will have to wait until... Uh, the Silent Hill 2 remake. For Silent Hill 4, you have to contend with 30 FPS. Locking the FPS higher than that results in multitude of glitches like jumpy enemy movement. But there were no issues with the camera mod for Silent Hill 3, on top of all the tweaks to get the best experience on PC. Ever wondered what bread looked like in first person, or take a gander at the bookstore shelves up close? Now you can. Playing in first person reminds me of VR with how the weapon appears on screen. Switching back to the fixed perspective from first person and now you're playing as John Cena. Or see how these games would look with a more modern, over-the-shoulder perspective. There's a multitude of options like changing the camera sensitivity and distance, FOV, and enabling manual aiming. Again, you're not perfect, but they get you a good 90% of the way there. The fact that something like this exists is a miracle in of itself. But what's most interesting about these Silent Hill camera mods is being able to compare over the shoulder with fixed cameras. As mentioned earlier, despite some of the design clashes, the Resident Evil 2 remake becomes so much more engaging with a fixed camera. For this mod, it shows how much you can lose when you switch from fixed cameras to an over the shoulder perspective. The games become far more generic. Now, to be fair, these games were developed with the fixed camera in mind, not over the shoulder. So several elements get lost in the shuffle. But now this gives me an excuse to gush about the virtues of fixed cameras while pointing out the many flaws of over the shoulder. As I mentioned earlier, a fixed camera takes control away from the player. Developers can craft angles to build tension and fear of what's around the next corner. Camera shots that give you a feeling that someone or something is watching us. You could use them to emphasize the importance of a location or items. For example, the tongs in the bakery of Silent Hill 3. The camera in Heather's head snapping ensures you won't miss them. But it's done so in a way that's far less immersion breaking than what you get from a modern over the shoulder perspective. Using the mod beyond Heather's head snapping to it, there's not much to emphasize the importance of these tongs. Of course, you could use lighting to put emphasis on the tongs. But of course, with games developed for the lowest common denominator these days, you'd have something like yellow paint or Heather going, wait a minute, those tongs. I'm thankful for all those in the indie space that continue to see the virtues of fixed camera angles. Games like Tormented Souls are a great example, but something I'd love to see return to larger budget titles. Over the Shoulder has its merits. If you're going for an action-heavy focus, by all means. Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space stand as high marks of the perspective, but it's done to death where so many games would be better suited for fixed cameras. Resident Evil 2 Remake being a perfect example, most evident while playing with a fixed camera mod. Unless you're bringing something new to the table, it's going to feel like every other over-the-shoulder shooter out there for the last 15 years. And if you're going for an action approach that requires this perspective, at that point you're better off not making a horror game. 
But with how much control you could take away from the player through fixed camera angles, you could do so much more in generating evoking fear in the player. Before Konami announced Bloober were making the Silent Hill 2 remake and rumors were floating around, I had a tiny tinge of hope that they would use fixed cameras. Of course, it didn't surprise me when that wasn't the case. But why did I have a tinge of hope? It was because of the medium by Bloober. Now, the medium is a mediocre walking simulator. It tackles darker themes with as much grace and subtlety as a sledgehammer. <sighs> You startled me. <laughs> I did, didn't I? You look real scared. <laughs> I I'm sadness. Marianne. A game I wouldn't have given the time of day to if not for the morbid curiosity of Bluebird being the studio behind the Silent Hill 2 remake. But what the medium had going for it, beyond the unique dual world mechanic, was its use of fixed camera angles. The developers showed a pretty good understanding of how to use fixed camera angles to build a mood. It did help me tolerate the many shortcomings elsewhere. Thing is, initial plans were to have the game using an over-the-shoulder perspective. Playtesters found the split-screen sections in the dual world disorienting while over the shoulder. Some even suffered from motion sickness. To solve the issue, the developers implemented fixed cameras. To keep things consistent, they used fixed cameras for the entire game. So there was that tiny tinge of hope that Konami hired Bloober for the job due to their experience with fixed cameras. Which, of course, didn't turn out to be the case. And to be fair, it's Konami at the helm. To expect them to take that risk is but a fool's errand. The remake looks to play like every other over-the-shoulder game over the last 15 years. But there's one company in particular that I'm looking at for hope, and I'm sure you're thinking of as well. That being Capcom, a company with experience in the survival horror space for almost 30 years. I'm not saying the next mainline Resident Evil title needs to be a fixed camera approach. As much as I'd love to see that, that's a pipe dream. Even a new spin-off title in the series would seem to be a stretch as much as I'd like to see it. But instead of having talented staff spend years on another goddamn fucking remake, give them the chance to work on something different. A new IP, a spiritual successor to the classic fixed camera RE titles of old. It's not like Capcom is adverse to making new IPs with games like Pragmata on the horizon. It's not like it needs to be some bombastic production. Take a chance with a smaller team and a tight scope to take a crack at a fixed camera horror experience. You know what? doesn't even need to use tank controls. Something I'm sure is a sticking point for larger companies in taking this old approach. We can't do that these days, no sir. Our audience will hate it. It's something I've made my peace with in expecting tank controls from a larger budget title. But it's not like back in the heyday of fixed camera horror titles, all games used tank controls. Many didn't with great effect. Capcom made one themselves with the excellent Overlooked Haunting Ground. While I prefer my fixed camera titles with tank controls, I can't understand this day and age why tank controls would be a no-go. If I want my fix of that, I'll stick with the indies. And sure, you could have modes where you could have modern controls and then have tank controls, but you have to build your game differently depending on which one you make. And it's not like it has to be a strictly fixed title approach. You could take influence from their own cancelled projects of old, like the earlier versions of RE4 which used fixed camera angles but switched to over the shoulder for aiming, something that the 2005 title Cold Fear made excellent use of. Or take influence from something like the Fatal Frame series, fixed camera angles shifting to first person while using our camera, one to get up close and personal with the many ghosts we come across. I'm so glad that indie developers keep old school fixed camera survival horror alive. You can make a more engaging, immersive experience compared to over the shoulder. And it's something I like to see larger studios take a risk on again. You can now get the classic Resident Evil trilogy on GOG, which I will add is the inferior way to play the games on PC compared to the Rebirth versions, but at least you can now play the classic series out of the box on PC. I do have to wonder how close Capcom will look at these with how they perform, a way of gauging interest in this style of horror. And there is a way Capcom could mitigate some risks in testing the waters with fixed cameras. They mentioned they spent time developing a fixed camera mode for the RE2 remake. Why not put a team together to finish the mode and release it as a DLC? They can make tweaks to the game's foundation that modders can't. See how it sells. Since its release in March of 2024, the fixed camera mod for the RE2 remake is the most downloaded mod this year for the game. And yes, that includes adult mods. Instead of spending time and resources on more remakes or deluxe demasters, yes, I said demaster, not remaster, looking at you, Dead Rising, take a chance and see if there's a market still there at a larger scale. Look at all those RPGs, Western or Japanese, that moved away from turn-based combat because those don't sell anymore. Gamers don't want them. And along comes Baldur's Gate 3 and sells over 10 million units within its first six months of release. And those sales numbers may even be conservative. Now everyone and their mother in that space is chasing after that success. I could be off the mark here. It's possible that the market isn't there at a larger scale for fixed cameras. That if I want new experiences with fixed camera titles, and these are the only choice for the horror front. There's only a niche audience for it today. And that's something I'm fine with. But I want to see proof of that. 
I want to see a larger studio take another crack at the fixed camera formula. The praise and success of the fixed camera mod for the RE2 remake leaves me longing to see what someone like Capcom could do. Take a chance on a return to the formula. I'm not expecting something like a Baldur's Gate 3 situation where style deemed outdated goes on to sell over 10 million copies. But I like to think there's a larger market out there than companies think. If you haven't checked out these mods, they're worth a spin, especially the fixed camera mod for the RE2 remake. They're a great way of changing things up on a replay. They're also a great means of seeing how important camera perspectives are to the world of horror. Thanks for watching. If you have any other recommendations for camera perspective mods for horror games, leave a comment below. This was by no means an exhaustive list. For example, I made brief mention of Signalis, a top-down horror game. I'm aware there's a mod to enable first-person or even an over-the-shoulder perspective. If I find enough interesting ones, I may make a future video showcasing them. Special shout out to my fellow boulder punchers for the extra support on Patreon or YouTube memberships. For those in the thank you for your patronage tier, American Boot and Tom Terrible. For those in the now this is boulder punching tier, Aleatoric Satan, CH3CH2O, Ethan, The Madman, and Waco. If you'd like to further support the channel, consider joining your fellow boulder punchers through Patreon or a YouTube membership. You'll get earlier access to videos, be featured in the credits, receive periodic newsletter updates, and of course, my undying gratitude. I, I saved this. Take me. Or throw objects. Just shut up.